this is the concluding video of industrial sickness that is the unit 6 of business environment course of the BBA program. We have already discussed about how industrial sickness can be defined, what are the internal causes, what are the external causes of industrial sickness and what could be the specific factors which will be responsible for small scale industrial units, their failure to sustain their activities ultimately leading towards their falling sick. So in this third video we shall discuss the remaining learning objectives of your unit and the learning objectives that we shall take up. One to explain the consequences of industrial sickness and then after identifying or explaining the consequences of industrial sickness we shall take up the other objectives that is that what measures can help in solving the problem of small business. So what could be the consequences of industrial sickness if industry falls sick, one industry falling sick will have the influence on its corresponding effects on its stakeholders. But if a number of industries in one particular industrial belt fall sick, right, the consequences will be far sick, is not it? So what could be the consequences of industrial sickness? We shall discuss that part. Then we shall also discuss, explain the measures for solving the problem of small business as far as industrial sickness is concerned so that they can be sustainable. Uh, in one of the previous units we discussed about this, the Sick Industrial Companies Special Provisions Act. SICA, S-I-C-A, that was passed in 1985 and uh, this was passed in 1985 because industrial sickness was regarded as a problem, as a national level problem, as a problem having serious national concern. That's why this particular act with special provisions was enacted in 1985. Because this act provided for speedy determination by board of experts and this board of experts and BIFR, board for industrial finance and reconstruction. Dear learners, this speedy determination is very very important. If an industrial unit is not determined as sick in the right time, the corresponding or uh, the cascading effects will be far far wider and much more detrimental to its stakeholders. So SICA was repealed and revival and rehabilitation of SIC companies are dealt with companies at 2013. 2013 the more or less the spirit is there some other measures have been adopted. So Industrial sickness has been given national importance by promulgating these acts as well as modifications made this Companies Act 2013. Because the consequences of industrial sickness right, are far reaching, far reaching in terms of its negative effects. In an underdeveloped labor surplus economy like India, we are not right in our country it's a very labor intensive economy we are having if the industries fall sick there will be high unemployment problems so that is a big concern so industrial sickness more specifically in our country though industrial sickness might happen in developed countries emerging economies developing countries everywhere but for a country like india industrial sickness is a major concern because we are basically a labor intensive economy. We cannot afford to have unemployment because we are having aggravating unemployment problem. And if there is an aggravating employment problem, what the unemployed youths will do? Some undesirable practices, right? the criminal activities, theft, decoits, right? all these, right? the undesirable social things. So, employment should be provided and in order to provide employment, our industries should be sustainable. 
At the same time, if for an entrepreneur, if an industry becomes sick, if an enterprise becomes sick, that becomes a right. The entrepreneur tends to lose morale. If it is successful, the morale will be high. And whenever an industry will get will be leading towards the sickness, there will be loss of resources, wastes of resources money, material, right? all kinds of resources. An industry is not just functioning in isolation, it is also supporting some ancillary units. Suppose the refinery is closed, along with the refinery, the truck drivers, right, the factories, the garages, the all the, the canteens, the security service, all the ancillary units, they will be closer of the ancillary units also. And that's why this is this incentive for the individual. So and so has failed. So I will not start up that industry. Like that. So there are some consequences of industrial sickness. And these are all very important consequences. Which are right, highly detrimental to the society. Which are highly detrimental to the spirit of entrepreneurship. So to address all this we can think about taking some corrective measures. What could be that corrective measures? so that industrial sickness does not take place. One is short term capital should not be used for long term investment. Suppose right, a bank has given a loan for say working capital management, purchasing of some right, say, current assets, but you are utilizing that money for purchasing some big machineries which are big long term implications. Means what? Your working capital problem is not addressed and that is likely to lead to some serious problems as far as your current business activities are concerned. Development of managerial skills, the management needs to be constantly trained as far as the changes in the environment and they should be continually adapt to the environmental changes so that they can remain contemporary, so that they can sustain their activities. Government prioritization in allocation of raw materials, right, so that Industries do not suffer because of the raw materials. Reduce cost of capital. If the cost of capital is high, the government may think about some capital subsidies so that the industries or the entrepreneurs can feel a bit relaxed. A program of monitoring should be institutionalized constantly. The industrial promoting organization, the financial institutions should constantly adopt a regulatory a monitoring mechanism so that the sickness can be detected early. We should not wait till the closure. It should be detected early. Maintenance of inventories at the optimum level. If we are piling up inventories, means what? Our working capital is blocked. If we are having shortage of inventories, means we will not be able to meet the requirements of the demand. So optimization is very, very important. Proactive role of RBI and promotional organizations. Just now I talked about the industrial promoting organizations, small industries, Development Bank of India, like that, Reserve Bank of India. All of them should take proactive measures. So these are some of the things by which the industrial sickness can be arrested. Dear learners, you read the unit and carefully observe the points regarding the various facets of industrial sickness, its consequences, its causes and what will be the measures that can be taken to address the problem of industrial sickness. Okay, thank you. Enjoy your learning. Thank you.